Hey guys, today I'm going to talk to you about a couple of things. Uh, this is the video that I promised for everybody. Uh, it's probably not going to go the way that you think it will. Uh, a few things. First off, the reason I didn't fish the FLW Tour. You know, there's actually a lot of reasons, uh, or Pro Circuit, whatever it is. Uh, there was actually quite a few reasons. I was already on the fence about that whole decision to begin with. Um, for various reasons, actually, a lot of a lot of stuff I never even discussed. I mean, it's just I think we all kind of battled with certain things, and I had mine, and everybody else had theirs. Uh, but ultimately, you want to know what really uh, pushed that over. Um, you know, last fall I was blessed enough to win the the Coastal Championship. Well, in the Coastal Championship, per the rules, uh, the winner. And 11 other guys that they decide through whether it's some type of qualification, uh, international winner, um, divisions, or whatever. 11 other guys, including myself, uh, make it to the Forcewood Cup. Well, Forcewood Cup doesn't exist anymore. Now it's the title championship. Title championship, the only way to get into that is to fish the pro circuit and to finish at a certain level in points and that's how you qualify well what this did is it kind of left about 12 guys out to dry here so I mean basically you get a check in the Forcewood Cup you get ten thousand dollars that's not even you know assuming that you win the event get a top ten it's not even taking into account the amount of sponsors you might gain from that the amount of publicity that you gain from that it you know that's all taken out of the equation because it's just I'm looking at it basically they took $10,000 away from 12 guys, including myself. So, is that right? I mean, when you make a championship that, that mimics almost identically to the Forcewood Cup, and you just change the name of it, and you kind of change the qualification of it, is that, you know, is that right? I, I don't know. You be the judge of that. I'm just giving you the facts here. Um, you know, the thing is, is last year, 2018, actually, I guess I, it was a year and a few months ago, uh, FLW came out with the schedule, they came out with the new rules, the payout structure, the entry fees, and they came out with the cup qualification for the Costa Series, now it's called the FLW Series. They came out with all these things. And in that, they included a, a raised entry fee. I think the entry fee went to like 1900 the highest that it's ever been. Which, I mean, you know, things cost money, and I get it. Entry fees rise up, payouts drop down. It's just the economy that we live in right now, I guess. But uh, anyways, all these things happened, and... We all had to make a decision. Are we going to fish the coasts this year? Are we not going to fish them? I chose to fish them, and I chose to fish them for basically one reason. And it, the reason I did is because I wanted to make the cup. Uh, you look at guys like Zach Bird, Sheldon Collins, just to name a few, that have fished the tour and qualified for the cup before the tour season even started, and that weight off of their shoulders. That, that was my main goal. Was like, you know what, I'm going to go to that coast championship. I'm going to make that cup. I'm going to take that weight off of my shoulders. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to take that pressure off. Well, the entire year, FLW promoted those cup spots. I would do the same thing. Because what it, what is it going to do? It's going to get more participation in the, the Coastas. I mean, you raise the entry fees, so you got to get people, you got to get that draw there somewhere. That was the draw, was the cup spots. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't anything else. It was the cup spots. How many cup spots they were giving away? 12. 12 cup spots to, from the Coastal Championship. That's an enormous amount of people. I don't care who you are. They were only taking like 40 from the, the tour. So you're taking 12 from the Coastas. Like, that's a big deal. So, I mean, and somebody's going to get those 12. And so I put myself in the position to do it. Fortunate enough to do it. A week after I made it, I hadn't heard anything. In the tournament packet, and, I, and I'll clarify, in the tournament packet that we were sent for the Coastal Championship included that these 12 people were going to get cup spots. I'm like, man, I'm game. Let's go. Let's go. And I, and I win it. 
A week later, I get an email from FLW that says, you know what? Forcefully Cup doesn't exist anymore uh, per the acquisition of MLF. And since that cup doesn't exist anymore, A, you don't qualify for a tournament. B, we're not going to pay you because where are the funds going to come from if the tournament doesn't exist? I actually get that. What I don't get is they've known about the sale and what MLF was going to buy for months. Let's just say, I think it was like February or March, they had meetings, very serious meetings about the purchase of FLW. I mean, you, you got to know that during those meetings that if you're not going to include the tour or the cup in the sale, you probably stop promoting the Costas going to the cup. I would, but I mean, I get it because you don't want to drop off participation or, you know, you got to get those entry fees in. I get it. I mean, from a business standpoint, like, doesn't make much sense to do that. But from an ethics standpoint, it'd be really hard for me to advertise something that I know I'm going to take away. Whether or not they knew or not, like, I have no idea. But that's just what it is. So, all these things happen. We all win. We all make the Forcewood Cup. We get it taken away. I immediately send an email back to the person I got the email from. I'm not going to list any names because I'm not putting anybody on blast. I'm not that kind of guy. But basically what they did is they, they never responded. So about a week later I called. I had a conversation with them and I said, Hey, you know what? Like, what are we going to do? Are y'all going to try to take care of us in some way? You know, I think y'all should take care of these guys. Let's figure something out. And basically, the response I got was, you know what, that was the old FLW. This is the new FLW, and that's just what it is. The thing that bothers me is there's so many guys, 11 other guys that didn't fish the tour. They just fished the BFLs. They fished the coasts. They were everyday fishermen. They put their hard-earned money into these tournaments to qualify for this tournament. I was kind of the exception of the rule. I was, one of the only, or I was the only tour pro that fished it. And I've been blessed enough with, you know, three Forcewood Cups, like Bassmasters Classic. I've done everything that I truly want to do. Like, I've won a tournament. I actually won two. I mean, like, I've had a phenomenal, phenomenal career. And I mean, extremely blessed as far as that goes. I feel bad for those other 11 guys. It was taken away from them. Like, that could have been their big break in this industry. That could have been their stepping stone to fish a tour, pro circuit, or whatever. Get those sponsors. You know, a tournament like the Forbes Cup gives you the opportunity to, to pick up a big sponsor. It Whether it happens or not, it gives you that opportunity. And, you know, that was taken away from all those guys. And I feel bad for them. I mean, just let, let's put it into perspective. Like, say, for instance, you're a BFL fisherman, and, and you've, you've fished the BFLs for five years. And I'm speaking hypothetically here, so just... Run with me here. Well, you fished the BFLs for five years. You paid your own way the entire time. You make the regional, which, I mean, it's not the easiest thing to do in the world. I think I only made a couple of regionals before I started fishing pro. But anyways, you make the regional, you win that regional, and you make it to the All-American. And you're like, man, I finally made it to the tournament that I've always wanted to fish. I've always wanted to fish the All-American. And then the organization comes to you and says, the week later, and says, you know what? We took the All-American away. We decided we're going to make another All-American. We're going to change the name. It's going to be the exact same format and everything. But you don't qualify, but you please fish all these series again to try to qualify again. How would you feel? <laughs> I mean, really, how would you feel? Would you be mad? Would you be upset? Would you be irate? Would you stop fishing that organization's tournaments? Would you fish more would would it inspire you to go fish more tournaments I don't know that you only you can answer that I chose to go a different direction because I couldn't look at it from an ethics point of view and say you know what I can support an organization that I've poured hundreds of thousands of dollars into over the course of my career and they take a tournament like that away from me and a bunch of other guys whether it's right or wrong, whether you can say it's business or not business, it'd be one thing if if they completely left, you know, completely changed the format of the pro circuit. 
And they did in the beginning, but now it's the exact same as the FLW Tour. You could basically take the FLW Tour and place it right next to the Pro Circuit, and it's going to look identical. The only difference is, is they're paying a different set of spots, still paying out the same amount of money, minus 100000 for Angler of the Year, and they took $100,000 off the top at the, uh, the title championship. But everything else is identical. But yet, that wasn't acquired. Neither was the Cup, even though the Cup and the title championship are identical. Now, I want to talk about one other thing. <laughs> And this is the part that I feel like a lot of people aren't going to expect. But with that being said, uh, one thing that MLF has done, and, and I'm not even saying MLF has done, but I think we have done as fishermen has created an extreme divisive nature in this, this industry right now. You're either on the MLF bandwagon or you completely hate them. Like, unequivocally hate them. You you like this or you hate that. You like that or you hate this. Like, that is where we're at right now. And that's not right. We, as an industry, have to figure out a way to work together. We promote these high school and college programs. Who cares about the organization? Whether it's FLW, Bass, Major League Fishing, whoever. We promote these high school and college programs. We want all these young kids to start fishing and get knee deep in this industry, spend money, have fun, fish tournaments, the whole nine yards. We are gonna eventually push everybody out if we keep this, this going. Like we have to figure out a way to work together. If we don't figure out a way to work together, this industry is so volatile that it will absolutely crash. People, these kids, these high school kids, these college kids, they're going to be like, man, I'm done with this drama. I'm out. And believe me, it will happen if we don't start working together. So I don't care if you're a major league fishing guy, you know, like a Jacob Wheeler or an FLW Pro Circuit guy like a Chris McCall or a, an elite guy like a Clark Winlet on the elites, Matt Airy. I mean, there's a bunch of them. It doesn't matter who you are. We have to work together. We have to be friendly like, you know what, and I, I want to clarify something. This isn't an all-out attack. My initial statement was not an all-out attack on FLW or Major League Fishing. It was just something I disagreed with. Did they have to do what they had to do? Yeah. But, like, I'm going to defend those 11 guys that got screwed out of that money. Like, you're crazy if you think I'm not going to defend them. Am I beating a dead horse because I'm supporting a couple guys that can't support themselves or don't have the voice to support themselves? Fine. I'll beat that horse all I can. But you know what? It's the right thing to do. And sometimes the right thing to do gets gets overshadowed by beating a dead horse or being misunderstood. And that's why I did this video. So there's no misunderstanding. It's a very clear message of what's going on. Because that's a factual message. But how can we work together? I'm not just going to spurt out, oh, we got to work together and not give any ideas of how we work together. Being nice to each other, that's the first thing. Like, quit making posts that talk bad about other fishermen. I don't care if you're a bass guy, FLW guy, MLF guy. It doesn't matter. Stop making posts that talk bad about other fishermen, first and foremost. You can talk crap about me all you want to. I don't really care. I've got thick enough skin. I'll ignore you. I don't, I just, it doesn't bother me. But... That is putting such a black eye on this industry by targeting each other. And You know, I, I get it. There's drama in this industry right now, and people want to jump on board on that bandwagon and support this insaneness that's going on. I don't support this insaneness. Do I want to spotlight some wrongs that are going on? Absolutely. But I'm not going to call out a fisherman or a set of fishermen, or an organization of fishermen because of what the organization is doing. I'm just not doing it. So, if that's what you were expecting is for me to like call out specific fishermen, not happening, because I don't have a beef with fishermen. And I know, don't get me wrong, there's fishermen that own Major League Fishing. They're part owners. I don't have a beef with them either, unless they pulled the trigger on that deal and that, and that kind of sucks. But you know what? Like, we're all 
fishermen. We all love to catch bass. Like, that's just what we love to do. So let, let's get back to that. Let's get back to working together and having fun. Because right now, it's not fun. It's just not. But to close, I just want to say thank you for everyone that subscribed, that's followed my channel, that have supported me in this transition. Because it is a big transition for me and my family. Uh, it was super weird not fishing the pro circuit the other day at Sam Rayburn. Uh, not surprised John Cox won. And not because the field's depleted or any other thing that you could say about the pro circuit. John Cox is just an animal. He was a roommate of mine uh, last year on the tour. He's a phenomenal fisherman, and I'm not surprised that he cracked that code over there. But, I mean, you look behind him, you know, Tommy Dickerson and, and Daryl Gleason almost took him over. I mean, and those are two local hammers that live in that area. So, could have been anybody's tournament. But, you know, congrats to him. You know, there's an elite tournament coming up next week or week after next, whenever it is. Good luck to those guys. Good luck to Major League on their first tournament. I hope no nothing but the best for every organization. But I did want to highlight what happened uh, with my decision and exactly how it went down and those cup spots and all those guys that get taken advantage of because it did happen. I mean, you can, you can point fingers in one way or the other. It doesn't matter. But that did happen. If you haven't subscribed, please just hit that subscribe button. It would help me out a lot. And I hope to make you a lot of great videos this year. Be collabing with uh, Bradley Home and Todd Castledon, Scott Martin. Be doing a lot of cool stuff, so be sure to watch it.